Now, an Accra High Court has adjourned to May 9, a case involving Food Sovereignty Ghana and three others, and the National Biosafety Committee and four others, over the commercial release of genetically modified rice and cowpea seedlings in Ghana. The High Court was today expected to give directions to begin hearing of the substantive matter, but lawyers for the fifth defendants, which is the Ghana Association of Farmers and Fisher Folk, pray the court to allow some time so they can have access to all processes uh, filed so far. But the counsel for the plaintiff, lawyer Tete Wayo, is unhappy. And the business for today was to take directions. Directions is the point where the court will take the two parties or whatever parties are before the court. There are issues in the matter. The very issues the court will set down for the trial to determine the essence of that matter. And then the fifth defendant's lawyer once again raised that the jacket before the court seems not comprehensive. It seems not to be full. It, does not, it might not contain all the processes filed so far. So they are praying the court that the court allows us to go back and then deal with that matter under the area of discovery. But uh, we have a little bit of reservation because what happened was when we had the injunction refused in 2015, we appealed against that. And normally what happens procedurally is that the jacket of the higher court will be transmitted to the Court of Appeal re re Registry records for it to be put together so that the, the, the docket will be transmitted to the Court of Appeal. Between that processes, our docket got missing. The jacket, the, the, the jacket we have today is a very big one because of the, the volume of processes filed. But the plaintiffs pay for that. And then the registry raised a new jacket for the court. And that jacket has been put before the court. We just came to court today, and then the defendants go back and raise the issue that uh, that jacket, because it's not the original one, because it's one, a second one that has been raised, they have a difficulty accepting that everything is in, the, in that jacket. And so the court should allow them to go and make sure that every process so far is there. The fifth defendant is just using these things to delay us because in the first place they were there at the registry and reconciled the document themselves before the registry, the registrar forwarded it to the court. So the one before the judge is the one they themselves have gone to the registrar, the registrar has gone through with them and then it's been forwarded to the judge. We come today and then they are still having issues with the jacket before the judge and it's just delaying this matter. This matter is almost three years. You see, and they are, they, are, they are going on with the so-called confined full trust in relation to the BT Kalpi and then the BT rice. So they are still doing what they, are, they, are, they want to do and they don't want this case to progress. This case must move on and let's see whether Ghana is ready to accept GMOs. So the courts of Ghana will look into it and then give a very good uh, view as to whether Ghana should go ahead or Ghana should hold on or Ghana shouldn't even go there at all. And they are using these small, small issues to delay the trial of this matter. And we are not so happy about it as plaintiffs. Okay, so and we're still on GMOs, and stakeholders continue to debate the, the readiness of Ghana to adopt and implement biotechnology and genetically modified organisms in the country. After several years of back and forth on this matter, a meeting called by the National Biosafety Authority aimed at finding a common ground failed as panelists were divided on the need for GMOs in Ghana. There's more in this report which sought to find a common ground for the adoption of biotechnology and genetically modified organisms in the country witnessed a divided frontier as stakeholders involved in the conversation took turns to agree and disagree with each other's presentation. Social economists and scientists were of the view that biotechnology and GMO is the way to go if the country seeks to advance its agricultural outputs. With this technology all over the world, there are several crops which have been genetically engineered. By 2013, 175 million hectares, over 100 fold increase one of the fastest advanced technologies, all because they put in place the rules and regulations to govern this kind of technology. So now all these crops are genetically engineered and is solving problems. All these, maybe next Valentine, we should have some blue roses instead of red roses. However, there was another part of the panel who vehemently disagreed with the concept of adopting GMO, saying Ghana as a country is not ready and prepared to adopt the concept. We believe that we are not even at the point where Ghana needs to be considering GMO, given the real facts on the ground about agriculture. If you look at our agricultural sector, the things that plague agriculture, plague our production, um, have to do with access to land, access to credits, uh, the availabil availability of infrastructure like uh, roads, warehousing to minimize post-harvest loss. These are the critical 
on the ground roots problems with our agriculture. And genetically modified organisms are not going to solve any of these problems. This issue of GMO in Ghana, we are not at the point yet. Going in for the claims that uh, GMO is around us, it's not around us. It is only, it will only be around us when we bring it in. Because in Africa, how many countries are going in for GMO? Just very few, about two countries. And some are even withdrawing. So why should we make the case as though it is around us and we have no choice? Even if it's around us and it does not inure to our benefit, must we be stampeded by the fact that it is around us? These are the practical things we need to do to address our socioeconomic needs as a country. After many years of debating the benefits and consequences of adopting genetically modified organisms in Ghana, stakeholders like the National Biosafety Authority, as regulators of GMO activities in the country, says it will continue to engage Ghanaians through its sensitization program until a definite decision on GMO is achieved. Reporting for Joy News, Charity Emil Battles.